Hello, everyone, and welcome to your 60-minute restorative yoga practice. My name is Caitlin, and I do hope this video finds you happy, healthy, and well. Today for the class, I will ask that you have a bolster, two blankets, and two yoga blocks. That second blanket will serve the purpose of added weight and warmth, which can help you relax pose to pose. We'll start today in reclined bound angle. Set your bolster long ways behind you, zipper side down. Grab for your blanket, fold it up, and put it at the back small edge of your bolster. From there, please take a seat on your mat just in front of the bolster and set your legs in bound angle. Soles of feet together, knees splay wide. Wedge your two blocks at your outer knees or outer thighs, wherever that resting point feels most comfortable. Second blanket, it's personal preference. You can place it over your feet. You can place it folded over your hips or unfold it entirely and place it over your entire body. Take your hands to the floor, support your lowering process and make sure the curve in your low back begins in a comfortable place. You adjust your blanket, let it pad the curve in your neck, the back of your skull. If it feels helpful, sway your torso right and left, shrug shoulders down. And then follow your elbows, forearms through the backs of your hands. Let everything take rest. And you can maintain the natural curl in your fingers or layer on Yanana Mudra. Draw your index fingers and thumbs to touch. Softly extend through your middle ring and pinky fingers. This is the seal of wisdom. It will support a gathered mind and the free flow of prana or energy through the framework of your body. Now in your higher heart, you know that this posture, it's nothing more than a suggestion. So starting class in this suggested pose, if it doesn't feel good, if it doesn't feel right, please honor those signals those requests from your body. Start class in a shape that would better suit you. And to celebrate the arrival on the four corners of your mat, take a long, slow, deep breath in. And open mouth exhale to release. Let your mind catch up with your physical body. Take these next few moments to actively listen to your surroundings. Become an active participant. Receive the sounds that fluctuate and unfold around you. And this is meant to be done without judgment, without reaction. And from the external experience, you start to draw your attention inward. If you haven't already, allow your eyes to close without squeeze or strain. And the lower palate of your jaw to soften. And you begin to narrow your attention down to the breath. so that when you breathe in, you know and you feel that you are breathing in. And when you breathe out, you know and you feel that you are breathing out. Far from easy, but very simple. Continue to breathe in a way that you know you are breathing. And while you lie here quietly developing your pranayama practice, I'd like to share with you a reading from the book of Awakening. And today's passage, it's about the beat of two hearts coming together as one. And in relation to your yoga practice, the underlying vibration 
is wholeness, it's oneness. The wholeness and oneness that is always there in support of you, in support of me, in support of everyone in this life. So as I share this passage, may you take what resonates and by conscious choice, you leave the rest behind. Two heart cells beating. If you place two living heart cells from different people in a Petri dish, they will in time find and maintain a third and common beat. A quote from Molly Vass. This biological fact holds the secret of all relationship. It is cellular proof that beneath any resistance we might pose and beyond all our attempts that fall short, there is in the very nature of life itself some essential joining force. This inborn ability to find and enliven a common beat is the miracle of love. This force is what makes compassion possible even probable. For if two cells can find the common pulse beneath everything, how much more can full hearts feel when all excuses fall away? This drive toward a common beat is the force beneath curiosity and passion. It is what makes strangers talk to strangers despite the discomfort. It is how we risk new knowledge. For being still enough, long enough, next to anything living, we find a way to sing the one voiceless song. Yet we often tire ourselves by fighting how our hearts want to join, seldom realizing that both strength and peace come from our hearts beating in unison with all that is alive. It feels incredibly uplifting that without even knowing each other, there exists a common beat between all hearts, just waiting to be felt. It brings to mind the time that the great poet Pablo Neruda, near the end of his life, stopped while traveling at the Lota coal mine in rural Chile. He stood there stunned as a miner, rough and blackened by his work inside the earth, strode straight ahead for Neruda, embraced him and said, I have known you for a long time, my brother. Perhaps this is the secret, that every time we dare to voice what beats within, we invite some other cell of heart to find what lives between us and sing. And we'll put that reading into a brief felt experience. Just as you are, breathe deeply and start to feel the beat of your heart. Meditate on the common beat the cells of your heart carry. Let this beat of your heart sound like a beacon from you. And as you enter this restorative yoga practice, continue sending the beat of your heart to everything around you. And you can send the beat of your heart to everything around you with conscious breath. And be aware of the moments you feel energized or filled with emotion. It is in the life of these moments that you are in full relationship 
with the world. Two heart cells beating. And as that registers in your body, from your heart, take a deep breath in and a strong breath out. And that passage written by Mark Nepo from the Book of Awakening. As you navigate today's restorative practice, may you continue to send the beat of your heart to all that is around you. Nourish your connection, your divine connection with all that is around you. And throughout this hour that you have diligently carved out of your life to be here, as many times as you get distracted, please come back home to the quality of your breath. And if right now you know you would benefit from more time in stillness, extend your stay, simply listen. If there's a readiness to move on, invite change to feet and fingers. Press your low back into the bolster, constructive rest, soles of feet to mat, knees stay bent, and then windshield wiper your knees to the right and to the left. Whichever way your knees fall, look in the opposite direction. A sweet and mild release for your low back, your neck. More than anything else, moving in a way that feels good and a pace that feels right. Take a full body stretch as if you were just waking up for the first time today. Extend your legs long and arms pull over your head. Rotate your smaller joints, ankles and wrists, both directions. Feel breath deep in your belly. Sweet and slow, release your arms heavy to the floor at your sides, bend into your knees. Be mindful of your surroundings, roll to fetal pose on your right side. Blanket or right bicep and forearm, create a pillow for the right side of your head. Hug your knees comfortably high and tuck your chin relatively low. And just take a few breaths that are a little bit bigger into your low back and side ribs. You want to make sure even through your transitions not to jar or jam your body. That way you can maintain a neutral energy level throughout the duration of class today. And you prioritize ease in your transition. Extend your top left leg long, that will serve as leverage. Press your palms into the floor and gradually lift up your torso, your neck, and your head is the very last thing to lift. Once you're upright, we'll set space for our first series, a twisted child pose. This is a belly down twist as well as a forward fold for your spine. Grab for your bolster. You'll put it out long ways in front of you. Make sure again that it's zipper side down so it doesn't agitate your face. Then grab for your two yoga blocks. You want these blocks to progressively get higher when you set them under your bolster. Then angle your bolster over top of the two blocks. You connect your outer left hip or upper left thigh to the small bottom edge of the bolster. When you check out your knees, they're in a stagger. You do not have to stack them. Take one of your blankets between your inner thighs. That creates a little more space for your low back. Option for that second blanket, cape it over your back body. Then take your hands to the floor. They frame your bolster. Really roll your left shoulder back, square off your chest. On an exhale breath, begin to forward fold and melt your upper abdominals, front ribs, and chest close to the bolster. 
softer for your neck, keep your gaze in the same direction as your knees. After a few cycles of breath, if you'd like to twist your neck and your throat, option to lift your head and look towards your left shoulder. Please note that is a fairly deep cervical spine twist. So if it actually is painful or harmful to your breathing, please give it a no thank you and go back to where you were. Allow your eyes to close, draw a little deeper into your body. If there's over effort through palms, arms or shoulders, soften. If there's a clench in your jaw, release it. And then finally, the area behind your closed eyes. Let them melt and release. And as you navigate this restorative practice today, I will leave you in more time with silence. That way you can practice your breathing and you can practice cultivating that state of intention. You can come back to that reading that I shared with you at the beginning of the class. With your conscious breath, send the beat of your heart, the energy of your heart to everything and everyone around you. Nourish this divine connection that is always there.
narrow your attention back to your breath. Feel your body breathe in, belly, ribs, and chest. Feel your body breathe out, soften belly, ribs, and chest. Prioritize the ease of your movement, your exit. You slide your hands back, spread your fingers wide, and press your palms into the floor. You lift up your torso, your neck, and remember head is very last. Once you're upright, you take that blanket off your back body. Just be gentle, move slow, remove the blanket between your legs, and then you'll turn away from your bolster. Plant your hands on the floor behind your hips, behind your buttocks. Wrap your shoulders back, lift your heart, and lift your gaze. Breathe a little bit bigger with your front body open, belly, ribs, and heart space. No clench in the jaw, no furrow in the brow. And while you're in center and you're symmetrical, take one more breath in, press palms down to lift your heart up. And on your exhale, relax, release. And let's take twisted child pose over to the right. Connect your outer right thigh or outer right hip to the small bottom edge of the bolster. Make sure your blocks are still smooth and that foundation. Take first blanket between inner thighs. Take your second blanket, cape it around your back. Hands to mat, frame your bolster. And really roll your right shoulder back, chest is square. Start to forward fold, let your upper abdominals, chest, and head take rest on the bolster. Initially, take the first few rounds of breath, feel into your neck and your throat. If it would feel restorative, option to twist your neck, lift your head, and bring the left temple, or left side of your skull, to rest. If you go for it and you can barely breathe or it just doesn't feel restorative, then say, okay, just go back to where you were. Soft jaw. Ease through your eyes. And if you find it beneficial, a cleansing exhalation to really settle in and commit to stillness. With your wholehearted attention, take a deep breath in. Open mouth, exhale, release.
Guide your attention back to the breath. A sweet inhalation, belly expand. In complete exhalation, belly soften. As you awaken your fingers, slide your hands back and press palms into the floor. Lift up your torso gradually through the neck and finally up through the crown of your head. And once you're upright, that same counter pose, but first clear your space of any blankets on your back body or between your knees. Turn to face away from the bolster, feet about hips width distance, knees stay bent. From your hands into the floor behind your buttocks, elevate through your heart, lift your gaze, but do keep the back of your neck soft and long. Feel the energy rise, heart open, and feel your breath deep in your belly. Our next posture, I would like to give one of two options. Option one, it's a half supported boat pose. A mild inversion helps to neutralize your spine, especially after those two twists. Option two is legs up the wall. If you have the space at home, it might be a wall, it might be a couch, it might be a dresser. If you know where you're going based on my direction, go for it, you don't have to wait for me. Otherwise, half supported boat pose. Your bolster and blocks stay exactly as they are. Put a blanket behind you that will pad neck and head. You scoot your buttocks very close to that angled bolster and then extend your legs up on top of the bolster. Again, make sure that your butt is very close to the bottom edge. Sometimes it can be helpful to lengthen your low back. Bend your knees, plant feet to floor, lift your hips, tuck your pelvis, and articulate your low spine back to rest. Legs extend, feet relax, and you have a blanket under neck and head, possibly a blanket folded over top of your body. Now this is where you might stay if space at home does not accommodate for legs up the wall or legs up the couch, legs up the dresser. If your space allows for that supported inversion, all you need is a blanket for neck and head padding. So bring that with you, migrate over to the wall. You scoot your hips very close to your baseboard, do a little tuck and roll like fetal pose, then roll all the way onto your back body and just as it sounds, extend your legs up the wall. Incredibly beneficial for your spine, helps you to neutralize and decompress. Depending on your anatomy, it can be a stretch for the hamstrings and it allows blood to flow in the opposite direction, right? A supported inversion takes off that ongoing pressure from gravity. Blanket pads neck and head, tuck chin beneath forehead. And whether you're in half supported boat or legs up the wall to gather your attention. From the beat of your heart, take a deep breath in. And open mouth, expel stale breath.
Narrow your attention back to your breathing. From your heart, a sweet breath in, followed by a complete breath out. A patient exit, hug your knees in towards your chest. Apanasana, full wind relieving pose. You can hold static, you can self-soothe and sway right and left. You can take your knees wide or hug them together. Much like I offered in opening meditation, simply moving in a way that feels good and feels right as you bring life and energy back into your body after that five minute hold. Roll all the way over to fetal pose. Remember tuck of your chin and hug your knees high into your heart. Just take a few breaths, a little bit bigger, and a little bit wider into your torso. You press your hands into the floor, lift up through your torso, your neck, and your head. And once you're upright from your inversion, next posture is a supported child pose. So now we focus on hips and a fold again of the spine. Grab for your blocks, first to second setting or second to third, if you don't want to fold so far over open hips. Just like you did earlier, grab for your bolster, angle it over top of the two blocks. And then physically, bring big toes together, take your knees wide, take a blanket, sandwich it between your calves and your sitting bones. Second blanket is optional, but encouraged. You drape it around your back body for added weight and warmth. Make sure that your knees are comfortable, hands to the floor, and slowly lower down torso, neck, and head. And you let either your temple, cheek, ear, maybe all three, rest on the bolster. Plant seeds of softness in your traps, the length of your arms and your hands. And about three minutes in, I will cue you to lift your head and look in the opposite direction. That way you stay balanced in your neck and your throat. Send your inner gaze down to your heart. Start to smooth and steady your breath. No reason to jar, but at the halfway mark, bring a slow lift into your head and allow the opposite side of your face to take rest. As you settle into that chosen change, make sure there's no clench in your jaw, no high lift or furrow in your brows. You guide your attention back down to the steadiness of your balanced breath.
Take a breath in to belly, ribs, and heart. Complete your breath out, belly, ribs, and heart. You slide your hands back, press palms into the floor. Lift your torso and remove any blankets that you used in child pose. We'll meet in tabletop, come to hands and knees. Shoulders over wrists, extend your right leg long behind you, tuck under right toes. Strong and straight without strain as you lengthen your right leg. Take a big breath into right hamstrings and right calf muscle. Exhale, tabletop, right knee, return to floor. And switch sides, extend your left leg long, tuck under left toes. Strong through inner hands and breath in your belly. Stay for your breath in. Exhale to release. Table top. Guide your left knee back to the floor. Next posture, a supported bridge pose. Grab for one of your blankets. Put it at the back, small edge of your yoga mat. And grab for your bolster. Put it out in front of you, but width-wise. This will support a bend in your knees or an extension of your legs. One of your blocks is nearby and handy, easy for you to access, along with that second blanket if you want it for overtop. Then recline to your back body, slow and with the support of your hands and arm strength. Adjust the blanket under neck and head. Then bend into your knees, stable feet, single block in hand, slide that block under sacrum, flat triangular bone where your spine meets your pelvis. As you shrug your shoulders down, feel length in the back of your neck. You can stick with bent knees and flat feet. That's the traditional expression of supported bridge, but you can also extend your legs long. That bolster would support your calf muscles or behind your knees, just depending on how tall you are. If that brings any pain into your low back though, please come back to the bent knee variation. If you'd like to open your hips, bring the soles of your feet together and let your knees splay wide too much through inner thighs again close off your knees last variation mimic an inversion like you didn't legs up the wall extend your legs up towards your ceiling if you'd like that second blanket now's a great time to fold it and place it over your abdominals last but not least open arms let them flop out to the floor at your sides feel open hands the lateral extension from your open heart Take a sweet breath in, down to lower abdominals. And a complete breath out, let your back body release.
take your time, but if they're not already there, stabilize through your feet on the bolster or on the floor. Drive into your heels, elevate your hips, and remove that single block from the sacrum. Tuck your pelvis and slowly articulate your low spine back to rest. Once you feel your tailbone grounded, take that same windshield wiper of your knees to the right and to the left. Clear out any lingering sensation in the low back. If you'd like to twist neck and throat, whichever way your knees fall, look in the opposite direction. For complete closure, hug your knees sweetly up into your heart space. Take a big breath in, hug tightly. Exhale, release into supported Shavasana. You extend your legs over top of that bolster. Make sure your heels touch the ground and your feet flop open. Adjust the blanket under neck and head. Make sure it's comfortable and helpful. And then blanket over top of your body if you so choose. To support this sacred transition into Shavasana, into corpse pose, let's take a deep breath in, fill up with life and energy, and open mouth exhale, you share this gift. And from my heart to yours, may you enjoy and appreciate your precious time well spent in rest.
breathe deeply in silence and feel the beat of your heart. Meditate on the common beat the cells of your heart carry. Let this beat of your heart sound like a beacon from you. And as you enter the rest of your day, keep sending the beat of your heart to everything around you. And you can do this with your regular breathing. Be aware of the moments you feel energized or filled with emotion. It is in the life of these moments that you are in full relationship with the world. Two heart cells beating. If you place two living heart cells from different people in a Petri dish, they will in time find and maintain a third and common beat. And from your heart, take a big breath in, a complete breath out. If your day allows, you very well might choose to extend your rest. Simply stay as you are and listen. But if there's a readiness to be guided out of Shavasana, you know in your higher heart the beauty of this is the delicate chosen change. Start to move your feet, your fingers, and your face. Work into your smaller joints, begin to rotate wrists, and your ankles in both directions. Gradually, a full body stretch that will feel most excellent. Lengthen limbs to traction spine. Remove any blankets over top of your body. Firm your low back into the ground and hug your knees and towards your chest. A soothing sway to the right and to the left, and you roll all the way over to fetal pose on your right side. And this posture of rebirth, of new beginnings, pause in it and feel into the effects of the last 60 minutes. And you move in a way that you feel taken care of. Extend your top leg long and press palms into the floor. Establish a comfortable seat. If that entails height, a folded blanket, or bolster. As you anchor into sitting bones, lift your heart, lift the crown of your head. And join your hands together at your heart in Anjali Mudra. Close your eyes and breathe deeply. May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings be safe. May all beings know peace. May all beings find their freedom. May all beings move through the world with ease. And my hope for you is that your practice, your healing is continuous your heart steady and of benefit to the family of all beings. To seal and share, take a deep breath in. Open mouth, strong exhale, release. With an abundance of love and gratitude extended to you, we close the restorative practice with a collective bow. Namaste. Thank you so much, everyone. Be kind to yourself and be kind to others. 
Know that it was absolutely my pleasure to guide you through this practice, and I hope to see you soon. <laughs>